Tonight, earnings from Google and Amazon, Facebook may allow anonymity, and Microsoft may soon get a new CEO. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show 14 for Thursday, January 30th, 2014. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. Google and Amazon reported fourth quarter 2013 earnings today. Both companies reported strong revenue and profit growth. Google CEO Larry Page announced $3.38 billion in profit, a 17% increase, and $16.68 billion in revenue, which beat expectations. The only major revenue drop was in Google's Motorola Mobility unit, but because Google is selling the unit to Lenovo, it's not expected to be a future problem. Shares were flat in after hours trading. Now, Amazon also grew revenue, which rose 20% to $25.6 billion for the quarter. Amazon's profits rose to $239 million, but that fell short of estimates on both counts, and the company's stock price was hammered in after hours trading. Amazon also revealed during its call that it might increase the cost of its $79 Amazon Prime subscription service by 50% to boost future revenue. Ouch. Facebook is thinking about letting users like and poke and comment on Facebook anonymously. CEO Mark Zuckerberg dropped that hint during an interview with Bloomberg Business Week today. And Facebook's not allowing it yet, though. Facebook's new paper app, which is a mobile social news reader that ships Monday, requires a Facebook login to use it. Now, Zuckerberg's comments may be a response to the slow loss of younger users who tend to end up on services like Snapchat and Twitter, which allow anonymity. Uh, Facebook may also, new, may also face, rather, new competition from new social products that are designed to be used an anonymously by all users. One such app shipped today. It's called Secret. It lets you share comments and pictures with your existing contacts, but they don't know who it came from, and they can comment on posts anonymously as well. Facebook's main rival, Google, however, is showing no signs of embracing anonymity, having recently removed it from YouTube by imposing Google Plus sign-in before commenting on videos. Now, Zynga announced the acquisition of UK-based gaming company Natural Motion for $527 million. Natural Motion are the team responsible for such successful iOS titles as CSR Racing and Clumsy Ninja, also included in the deal is Natural Motion's Euphoria technology, which they've licensed to such titles as Grand Theft Auto, Auto 4 and 5 and Max Payne 3, among others. Zynga says that they will continue to license the technology but retain exclusive use of it in the mobile space for their own gaming efforts. Now, Natural Motion also brings with it a number of current and upcoming titles, franchise potential characters, and a 260-person team. But on the flip side... Zynga also announced it is laying off another 15% of its workforce. That's 314 employees as part of a continued plan to reduce costs. Now, coming up, an electronic tongue with a taste for beer. But first, uh, we have a few guests joining us today. Joining us is Kara Swisher, co-executive editor of Recode, as well as Harry McCracken, editor-at-large for Time. Thank you both for joining me today. Thanks a lot. Uh, so there's been a lot of talk today, but no official announcement from Microsoft about a new CEO. Now, Kara, you reported this morning that mul multiple sources are pointing to Satya Nadella as being selected as Microsoft's new CEO as soon as this week. What do you know about Satya? Uh, I, I didn't say he was selected. There's been no vote. So I said he was the lead candidate that they were zeroing in on. So let's just be clear. There's no vote yet. Uh, they're, they're, I'm guessing they're going to meet this weekend. That would make a lot of sense. But... There's not going to be a vote for several days, which is why it's been within a week. Sure, sure. Now, Harry, if, in fact, Satya is picked as CEO, uh, how would you say it would change Microsoft? Oh, about, yeah, the fact he's an insider doesn't mean it might not involve a lot of change. I think the striking thing is that he's in charge of this cloud and enterprise part of Microsoft, which is huge and extremely successful. But it's the part of Microsoft that the consumers, you know, don't think about at all. Um, and it's probably doing better than Windows 8 and uh, their efforts with phones and tablets. And uh, it, it just shows that uh, if you, all you are know about Microsoft is the consumer stuff, it's, that's just sort of a tiny part of what they do. And, and he's in charge of stuff that's doing extremely well. Sure. Absolutely. Now, Kara, 
as you said earlier, the board has not voted on this, as far as we know yet. Um, but in your own opinion, do you think this is pretty likely? How do you feel about it? I don't know. I mean, they vote until they vote. I'm not. I'm not unsure. They haven't voted. They haven't voted on it. So it's not. Uh, so it's. I think it's just. I think what happens is these things tend to get circus-like, and that's unfortunately the Microsoft CEO search has been a circus. Sure. Um, uh, and it's taken a long time too. It's been a tired circus now. And so I think that you know people are in or out or whatever. I, I wait until they actually vote. I was just indicating that he's the one that is, is the likeliest one to be voted on by them. Uh, and so I think that. He's, you know, he's sort of a known quantity. I think they, after all, they're searching and upsetting wars across the country. They're picking a person they already know. And, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting choice. I mean, first of all, Sasha's has worked all over Microsoft. He, I met him when he was working for Bing, uh, when we became Bing, the online service division. So he's had a lot of experience across Microsoft, not as much consumer, but he's been in the consumer space. So he does know the company well. On the downside, he's not you know, the most inspiring choice, I think. Sure. Um, you know, there's people they could have gotten that are that were a little bit more inspiring, but um, but he may be the person just to get the job done. I, I don't know him as a visionary. I think he's a very can-do kind of guy. Um, there's an interview of him that I did several years ago up on our site. Um, very smart, very cerebral. Uh, I wouldn't say, again, that he's going to fire up the troops, but you never know. People often rise to the occasion and change when they become they have a big job. Absolutely. Well, that's great. Uh, thank you so much, Kara. Uh, and as well, Harry McCracken, we really appreciate you both joining us today uh, to talk about Microsoft. We'll just have to obviously wait and stay tuned and see what happens next. Thank you both. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, before we go, we have this, a robot with a sense of taste for beer. That's what researchers at the Autonomous University of Barcelona did. They created an electronic tongue with the ability to differentiate between certain varieties of beer with 81.9 percent accuracy man uh you can tell the difference between a lager double malt pilsen alsati alsatian uh i can't even pronounce these beers that's i've never even had them before and low alcohol beers uh but i know i want a beer right now the idea behind this e-tongue is to test food at a factory or do away with food tasters. I'll take up the challenge. Uh, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Remember, you can subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Jason Howell. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.